Hi guys, it's Baldrick here, and in today's episode, I'll be doing a Alienware Alpha killer PC build. So basically, the PC parts that I'm putting together for you on today's video is going to be a lot better than the Alienware Alpha in terms of price to performance, and it's also going to be a beast gaming PC as well, so we're not compromising in any way here. So the total cost of the PC that I have built here is 1029 Australian dollars, so if you're in USA, it's probably a lot cheaper because Australian prices are pretty ridiculously expensive for computer components, as you'll see in the video. So basically how I do these, I basically just roll some Battlefield gameplay in the game in the background so you guys don't get too bored of the computer components and I talk about how each component is going to benefit the PC. So the Alienware Alpha, the base model is I'm pretty sure $700 in Australia, the medium model is about nineteen about $900 in Australia and the highest model of the i7 and 2TB hard drive is $1300 in Australia so I'm going to show you how to get $1000 and get the same experience except a lot better and by a lot better I mean this PC is going to be outperforming the most expensive Alienware Alpha variant which has an i7 but is it's a mobile i7 so it's nowhere near as powerful as the, or it is it will beat the uh, processor I've picked in video rendering, but in gaming it will make no difference at all. So this is what it's for, it's for gaming. Anyway, I'll start off with the operating system. I'll just chuck in standard Windows 8.1 operating system, and that costs 115 Australian dollars from the website PC Case Gear. So that's where I'm getting all these prices from if you're wondering. So I won't talk about that, it's what you need. You can run Steam uh, V console mode on it, so you'll be fine with that. And for our processor, I've picked the Intel Core i5-4460. So that comes in at $339, and it is the cheapest i5, but you, you don't really need that great of a processor to get a good gaming experience, but it's definitely better than the dual core i3 you'll be getting with the... Uh, Alienware Alphas, and it's definitely better than the i5 that comes with it, because if I don't even get above 3 gigahertz, the processors that come with the Alienware Alpha, because it is a mobile processor, and this is a full-on desktop processor, so it doesn't have any restrictions like a laptop processor would. So, uh, it's got decent performance. Unfortunately, you won't overclock, but I wouldn't see why you would want to overclock in a little PC like this anyway. So, that's why I've picked the i5. And if you want a better processor, obviously, you can change it to whatever desktop processor you want, as long as it fits a motherboard. So, now we've got the next most important thing which is the graphics card. The graphics card I've picked is a beast compared to what the Alienware Alpha is using. The Alienware Alpha is using a modified uh, laptop graphics card, which is a modified 860M, which is, it isn't that great. It does use Maxwell architecture, I'm pretty sure, but compared to this desktop AMD processor, it doesn't even stand a chance against this 270X. So the uh, full model is the R9 270X, it's made by XFX and it's got 2 gigabytes of video memory which is perfect for 1080p gaming which you'll want to do on this uh, graphics card anyway or this gaming PC. So it does support 4K video, it supports everything AMD usually supports, multi-monitors, but it's perfect for what you're doing here. It's, I thought I'd add the extra 19 bucks just to get the slightly better graphics card over the 270, and it's definitely outperforming in terms of games, uh, the Alienware Alpha, and you're going to be setting the settings in games pretty high, even the latest ones coming out. So that's why I picked that graphics card, and um, once again it's replaceable, you can replace this graphics card with anything you want in the future, or you don't even have to pick it to start off with, you can put in a 760 if you're into Nvidia, or you can put in a 780 if you want, because this little PC can be pretty powerful with a case I've picked, but I'll get onto that later. So the RAM I've picked for this PC is Corsair Vengeance 8GB, so it's a single stick because the motherboard I've picked only has two slots for RAM, so for I won't uh, skimp 
on the RAM by getting two force sticks. So in the future you can upgrade since you've got one stick in. So that's good. It uh, it's clocked in at 1600 megahertz, which is perfect. And yeah, it's got average timings. It does everything you want a PC uh, gaming RAM you'd want it to do anyway. So the RAM doesn't really matter too much in terms of performance. So now we've got. I guess one of the most important parts, I'd say the motherboard. The motherboard I've picked, I've I've used it in a lot of my sort of mini ITX builds just because it's an awesome value motherboard. It comes with AC Wi-Fi and it fits the latest hats, has well processes it in it as well. So I've picked the ASRock H97M ITX AC mini ITX motherboard so it's a pretty big name but yeah that's what I've picked it you don't really care how it looks since it's going to be in a case and you won't be able to see it so it, it's fine it's got the Wi-Fi as well so you don't have to add a Wi-Fi card and you can have your graphics card as well so that is perfect for any sort of home theater setup or TV setup that you've got it will fit nicely in the case I've picked anyway so yeah, it fits a graphics card, obviously. And the power supply powering this PC, I'd say, is a bit overkill, but I've picked the uh, Cougar RS650, which is a 650 watt rated at 80 plus uh, power supply. So it's good enough for what you're going to do. It's not going to let you down. You can chuck in any graphics card that is a single GPU into this system as long as it fits in the case. So you are not being held back by the power supply. And the power supply being chucked in at the Alienware Alphas isn't really even listed, so this is probably a much better quality power supply anyway, as you're not using, uh, I guess, laptop components, so obviously desktop components will be a lot better. And that's another thing, this is using desktop memory, so desktop memory is generally a lot better than laptop memory, and it usually costs less uh, per performance, so you're getting a lot more per performance uh, for how much you pay compared to the laptop components which is good. So now I'll get onto what I guess another key component to this little console like build which is the case. I've picked the Coolmaster Elite 130 Mini ITX case. This case is just looks pretty good. It fits a disk drive as well. You can put Blu-ray in there if you want. But it just fits everything. It fits your hard drive. You can put your SSDs in it. So you can probably add a few more if you cram it in there. But it does everything you want it to do. And it supports pretty big graphics cards. It's said over, I'm pretty sure, 300 millimeters long. So that's really big graphics cards. And the graphics card I've picked is definitely below that. So it's perfect. It looks good. It's doesn't look really bad. It should fit anywhere you want it to on your desk, near your TV. You, can, you don't have to use this as a console PC, but that's what it's for. So it does look like a proper console PC. It's got a nice front I.O. on it, so you've got your USB 3, and I'm pretty sure the audio jacks are there, and the USB 2. So it's got even more than my Alienware Alpha. So now that brings us to near the end of this PC build, I've just picked for the hard drive the Western Digital Blue. So that is a terabyte of hard drive storage and it only costs about, uh, what was it, it was $69. So that, that's decent price for the hard drive, I'm sure you can find it a lot cheaper than that. And I'm sorry I forgot to go over the uh, Coolmaster Elite uh, price which was the case, that was $55, and the power supply was 75 So we're not spent, we're not wasting too much money on uh, many of the key components here. We're, we're spending a lot of the money on the CPU and GPU and motherboard, so that's really good to see. Uh, so after the hard drive, I've got the optional uh, Samsung DVD uh, reader, if you want or reader and writer. So if you want to play some DVDs or you want to play some old games that run off DVD-ROM, you can do that, and it's also easy to install your OS, and obviously it fits in this case, because it's got a five and a quarter inch bay for the, uh, I guess, the disk drive, so that's what you want, it's internal, it looks sleek, you press a button, it comes out, it's going to be a beast PC, the Alienware Alpha doesn't even have a disk drive, not that you need it, but it's good that this does if you want it, and that's really all I recommend for this build, guys. You're going to have a great time maxing out those games on this PC. I tell you, I'd love to get a PC like this. 
I just have in my TV room. It would be awesome. And it will work perfectly with a controller if you put it in Steam Big Picture mode. So that's what I would recommend. So I hope you enjoyed this build, guys. Tell me what you think. Do you want any more of these builds in the future? Uh, be sure to let me know. So thanks for watching. Have a nice day.